Radio 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 Welcome to the Superman Radio Podcast here on Radio Metropolis. Tonight with Poco's life in danger trapped inside a refrigerated freight car. His only hope is if Superman and Batman could rescue him in time. At least we have Superman and Batman in this episode, and that's always fun. This is the Phony Song Publishing Company, Part 2, from December 5th, 1946, here on the Superman Radio Podcast on Radio Metropolis. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Clark Kent's little friend Poco seems doomed to a horrible death in a sealed refrigerator car, Superman and Batman set about to rescue him. After having already borrowed a considerable sum of money, Poco, editor White's little cook who speaks in rhyme, threatened to shoot himself unless White loaned him another $50. White wrestled for the gun and it went off, the bullet grazing his head. When the gray-haired editor regained consciousness, Poco had disappeared. Fearful for the little man's safety, White sent Sheriff Johnson, the local police officer, to search for him. And at the deserted suburban railroad station, the sheriff and his deputy heard muffled calls for help coming from a refrigerator car. The voice was Poco's. But the car was locked, and before the sheriff could attract the attention of the crew, the train pulled away. As we continue now, Sheriff Johnson has rushed back to his little police station and is phoning the next town on the railroad line. Listen. Well, there's the yard man on duty all night at Brookhaven, Ed. We'll get him to flag that freight and get Poco out of that refrigerator car. I hope the poor little guy is still alive by then, Sheriff. Well, it's only 12 miles to Brookhaven. Yeah, but it's awful cold in a refrigerator car, you know. Yeah, sure is. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Why doesn't somebody answer that phone? Fella might be out in the yard. Well, he better get back in before that freight goes through or it'll be too bad for Poco. Yeah, sure will. Brookhaven. Uh, Listen, this is Sheriff Johnson at Willow Heights. Hey, look, right. a freight left here a few minutes ago going north with a fella locked in a refrigerator car. I want you to flag it down and... What's I... that? I said a fella is locked in a refrigerator car. Holy smoke. Yeah, a little fat guy by the name of Poco. Oh, how'd he get locked in the car? I don't know, but you got to stop the train and get him out before he freezes to death. Oh, do my best. What's the number of the car? The number? Oh, uh, just a minute. Uh, you happen to notice the number of the car, Ed? Nope, but didn't, Sheriff. Uh-huh. Uh, we didn't notice. But it was about in the middle of the string. Oh, well, do you know the number of the engine or the trip? No, the engine was way up, way up ahead in our station here, closing down at 10 o'clock. But we figured this freight pulled off the main line to let the limited go past. It, it was just a few minutes ago. Okay, hold on a second. What do you say, Sheriff? He's looking up something. Oh. Say, how do you suppose Poco got locked in that car? Well, how should I know? Lots of funny stuff going on here tonight. Yeah. Barry White getting shot and Hello, then... Oh, Sheriff. Yeah? That freight must have been number one. I don't care what the number it was. Just flag it down and get Pope out of that refrigerator car. Well, let me finish, will you? Number 136 isn't coming through Brookhaven. Not coming through? What? No, What's it, it switches off at Branch Junction to go through the Blue Hills to Benson City. But... The... Matter of fact, it must have switched off the line already. Well, cheapers. what's the next station I can call in? Oh, well, you can't call any station this side of Benson City. There aren't any in the Blue Hills. Benson City? The freight can't be there before morning. That's right. What's up, Sheriff? Wait, Ed. Listen, Poco can't stay in that refrigerator car till morning. Oh, uh, not to keep alive, he can't. Sir, <laughs> what can we do? Well, we've got to do something. Say, can't we contact that train some way? I don't know how. A couple of our fast passenger trains have got radio telephones, but none of our freight runs have. I'll call the division office, though, and see if they can do anything. Yeah, yeah, okay, do that. Tell them it's a life or death emergency. Right. So long. Yeah, so long. Whew. Well, unless a miracle happens, I'm afraid the poor little fella is done for, Ed. Oh, uh, poor little guy. Listen, Ed, you stay here by the phone, huh? Right? I, well, I got to go over and give Mr. White the bad news. <laughs> And 
That's the situation as it stands, Mr. White. Good Godfrey. You mean there's no way to contact that plane, Sheriff? I guess not. Leastwise, the yard man at Brookhaven says there isn't, Mr. White. You see, the freight switched off at Branch Junction yes. to go through the Blue Hills. Mm. And, well, there's no station in the hills till Benson City. Oh, jeepers, that's awful, Chief. Oh, Poco will be frozen long before they get to Benson City. Sure he will. Look, Sheriff, can a locomotive go after that freight and stop it? Well, I guess the division office will think of that, Olsen, if it can be done. But, well, what I'm afraid of is, well... Poco's been in that car for some time now, and well... Oh, we've got to do something. Sure, sure, but what, what? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to call Mr. Kent. Kent? Well, what can he do? I'll bet he thinks of something. Nonsense. He can't do anything. Besides, he was hurt in that explosion in his apartment. Just the same. I... And his telephone was blown up. How are you going to call him? Oh, gee whiz, I forgot. Wait, I've got an idea. <laughs> Wait, Clark. You can't go to the door. If anyone sees you're not injured, they'll know you're Superman. Oh, I almost slipped that time, Bruce. You better answer. Okay, you keep out of sight. Right. Coming. Yes? I'm McBean, the superintendent. A fellow wants Mr. Kent on the phone. Says it's very important. Well, Mr. Kent can't come to the phone now. I know. Just... That's what I told this fellow. But he says it's a matter of life or death. He says his name is Jim Olson. Jim? Oh, I'll come down and talk to him. I'll be right back, Clark. Okay, Bruce. Hurry. Jim says that Poco is locked up in a refrigerator car, Clark. Great Scott. That's right. And the train is somewhere in the Blue Hills, en route to Benson City. And there's no way to contact it before it gets there. By which time, of course, poor Poco will be frozen to death. Well, I'll contact it personally. As Superman. As soon as I strip down to my costume. Take me with you. I'll peel down to my Batman outfit. Okay. How did Poco manage to get locked in a refrigerator car? Jim didn't know. Seems like a lot of fancy things have been happening at Perry White's place tonight. Oh? Yeah. Incidentally, your boss was creased by a bullet. What? Yes, but relax. He's okay now. Oh. Just scared silly about Poco, who's going to be a frozen mackerel unless we get going and fast. Well, I'm all set. Just open a window. Okay. Okay, right. there you are. All right, latch on. Let her go. Up! And away! <laughs> the Blue Hills, but I don't see any trains, Superman. There are the tracks, Batman. There's a long freight train up ahead. Where? You'll see it in a moment. Faster! There. See it now? Yes. You suppose that's the one we want? We'll find out soon enough. Can't be too soon. Poor Poker's been locked up in a refrigerator car all the way from Willow Heights. I see him. Hang on, Batman. We're going down. Right. All right. Hold on to this ladder while I get the door open. Don't worry about me. Just get in there to Poco. Sorry, I've got to smash this door open, but there's a life at stake. Here it goes. Oh, nice going, chump. Okay, in we go, Batman. Right behind you. Boy, talk about the North Pole. Yeah. Oh, where is he? Over here. Poco. Poco. Oh, the poor little chap. Is he off? Just a moment. Yeah, he's still alive. Good. But he's in bad shape. Up with him. We'll have to move fast. He's to have a chance for his life. Let's get moving, then. Right. Hang on. Here we go. Up and away! Leaping from the speeding train with Poco in his arms and Batman clinging to him, Superman streaks back toward Metropolis. Will Poco live? We'll know in a moment when we return for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. Assured by the doctor that Poco is out of danger, but that he cannot speak or be spoken to for several hours, Superman, forced to continue playing the role of the injured Clark Kent, returns to his apartment in Metropolis with Batman. Headed to Perry White and Jimmy Olsen, retired to sleep. But just as dawn is breaking, White suddenly awakens and calls out... Who's that? Who's that, I say? Shh, it's me, Chief. Jim. Huh. Well, what are you doing up at this hour? I thought I heard something. What? It's not so loud. It sounded like somebody moving around. Oh, don't be silly. There's nobody in the house but us and Poco. And he's fast asleep. I know, but I heard something odd, though. Oh, probably just the wind blowing a shutter or something. Now go on. Go on back to bed. Well, maybe you're right. I don't hear anything now. No, no, of course not. Now go on back to bed. Haven't we had enough 
trouble tonight without you gallivanting around before dawn? Well? Well, what are you waiting for? Wait a minute. Stay out of Poco's room. The doctor said he wasn't to be disturbed. Chief. Uh, be quiet, you idiot. You'll wake him up. Chief, come here, quick. Now what? The... Oh, can't I have a minute's rest? First, Poco almost blows my head off. And then he gets himself locked up in a refrigerator car somehow. And now you, Olsen... Well, well, what is it? Look, he's gone. Huh? Well, who's gone? Poco. What? Yes. See, his bed's empty. Poco's gone. Vanished. <laughs> Gasping, Perry White grips Jim Olsen's arm and stares at the empty bed and then around the deserted room, which is now faintly illuminated by the first gray light of dawn. What has happened now to the little man who speaks in rhyme? What is the mystery Poco refused to reveal, and which resulted in the near death of Perry White, and then of Poco's being locked in the refrigerator car, and now his disappearance? Tomorrow's exciting episode brings some strange answers, so be sure to be with us then. Don't fail to tune in again tomorrow. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. And that was the Phony Song Publishing Company Part 2 from December 5th, 1946 here on the Superman Radio Podcast on Radio Metropolis. As we missed some of the war episodes, which did offer some vital backstory to a few of these current episodes we do have in existence, the character of Poco is one whose existence always escaped me. I never understood why uh, he was in the show. Frankly, I'm not a fan of silliness like Poco, or even Mr. Zero in The Adventures of Superman, kind of you know, A and B, which I recently listed as the worst Superman TV episode of all time. And not because they featured a little alien character. It was because they did it in such a silly way with silly thugs, rather than deal with it in a way that would have had more substance, since Superman is also an alien. Imagine that message going to the kids if they put a little bit of script excellence into that. But they weren't about doing that in the final or the few final seasons of the Superman show. They just kind of went with it, with a few exceptions. But in this radio series, Poco was a comic relief character who lived on the planet Utopia as a court jester, but somehow became Perry White's personal manservant and cook. I think once that planet exploded or whatever happened to it. Now, we missed his entire backstory since Poco debuted in the 1944 serial Planet Utopia. As of the recording of this podcast, no episodes have surfaced. I have read that Planet Utopia uh, will be retold in a future 13-part serial called The Mystery of the Lost Planet, originally heard between April 9th and April 25th, 1947. And we do have that. I did check, so those episodes do exist. Since this episode is from December 5th, 1946, we only have four short months from this episode before that story begins. According to one of the Superman fandom sites, Poco initially accompanied the utopian Anthar, who came to Earth to warn Superman of an invasion by Utopia's dictator Zoram. Anthar knew Clark Kent had contact with Superman, but settled for Jimmy Olsen. This almost sounds a little bit like the Apollo story in in many, many ways. So anyway, uh, this Anthar abducted Jimmy Olsen uh, to Utopia in order to prove his tale. Poco and Jimmy became friends, but Jimmy and Anthar are sentenced to death by Zorm. Pretending to side with the ruler, Poco is able to escape in a plastic space shell where he returns to Earth. Back at the Daily Planet, Poco meets Clark Kent and Perry White for the first time and informs them of Jimmy's plight. Poco then accompanies Superman, but they have trouble finding the planet. Eventually, Zorm's plot is is foiled, uh, but the planet Utopia is destroyed. 
Both Anthar and Zoram are killed in that explosion. Superman rescues Jimmy and Poco. However, and, you know, therefore, thusly, I should say, was the Poco we have since been introduced to. Since then, Poco, unfortunately, is featured every now and then, and he's kind of like a very bad Lou Costello of the Superman world. If you're wondering which of the Superman serials featured Poco, and even, even if you're not, I'm going to give them to you anyway. Planet Utopia from November 16th to December 4th, 1944. Then in February of 1945, it was The Space Shell. Uh, January 17th, 1946, in one installment of The Mystery of the Talking Cat. And then, of course, the ill-fated The Radar Rocket, which I just hated. From February 15th to March 14th, 1946, we then heard him uh, in brief installments of The Clan of the Fiery Cross in June of 1946. And we're hearing him right now in the phony song publishing racket. And I have a feeling we're going to hear him again in the phony housing racket, which uh, takes us from December 4th through uh, December 27th, 1946. And finally, we will hear the last of him in the mystery of the lost planet, which is the remake of Planet Utopia from April 9th to April 25th, 1947. All right, that is it. Uh, we're going to get through this. Um, I hope this gets better. Again, I'm not a fan of Poco. The rhyming drives me insane. I don't like episodes that don't really feature Superman as much, but I understand why they did this episode. This episode, well, we'll talk more about it in future podcasts. Anyway, that was the Phony Song Publishing Company, Part 2, from December 5th, 1946, here on the Superman Radio Podcast on Radio Atropolis. This is Radio Retropolis.